Well, it finally happened. I may have actually done something practical using Vim. The other day I stumbled upon an X command called to HTML. It creates an HTML version of the current buffer, but it doesn't only use the text, it also includes the colors, so you end up with an HTML page that looks like a snapshot of your current file with all the syntax highlighting and all that stuff. I thought, wow, this is super cool, but I don't really know a way that I'm going to be able to use this. Fast forward to a few days later when I was trying to finish up a color scheme. I was done with all the basic highlighting groups like uh, the status line, the color of the tabs, the line numbers, all that kind of stuff, and I was starting to begin to choose colors for different language specific syntax elements. And don't worry, this is not an advertisement for my new color scheme. It's just that it's when I do this, it's, really, it's a really annoying process. I end up using a color picker in a web browser to experiment with different colors, and I have to manually copy paste hex color codes from the browser and into Vim one by one, and it's just really tedious, and it's hard to get the colors right on the first try. So you probably see where I'm going with all of this. I realized that I could be able to use 2HTML to help speed up this process. It's so nice to have all the colors uh, together in a single place where I can easily tweak them from. I can just click on the parts of the code that I want to change and use the color picker in the Firefox dev tools and get instant feedback. Once I was happy with the colors, I realized I would need a way to get them back into Vim and into the individual highlighting commands. I was pretty surprised to find that the Firefox dev tools has a changes tab that I could just copy from to get all of the CSS rules that I had changed. The syntax highlighting names are used for each CSS rule, which is super convenient. So I began to clean up and reformat the file. First, I used the V command, which works just like the global command, except it performs on the lines that do not match the search pattern. I targeted the lines that did not include the CSS class name, nor the new color rule, and I used the D underscore command to get rid of them. From there, I was able to apply a normal command against every line in the file. JCT pound sign to move down a line and delete until the hashtag symbol. Since C puts me into insert mode, I just hit backspace a couple of times to get the hex code on the same line as the highlighting group name, and also to delete the opening curly brace after the CSS rule. Since you can't type a literal backspace character into the normal command, I had to use control H. And I found that out by searching the help docs for backspace. From there, I started recording a macro to finish transforming the text into the actual syntax highlighting rules that I would need. QQ to begin recording into the named register Q. CW to get rid of the leading period and drop into insert mode. Highlighting rules begin with highlight, so I typed that escape to go back to normal mode, and then F pound sign to jump to the start of the hex code. I want the foreground color to have the hex code as the value, so I typed GUI FG equals, then I hit escape to return to normal mode, and then F semicolon XQ to jump to the semicolon, delete it, and stop recording the macro. Finally, I can replay the macro across all the remaining lines in the file and then go over to my color scheme file and paste in the changes. Oh, and the reason my color scheme is so beige is because it's inspired by my old keyboard that looks like it's from the 1990s. If you don't like it, that's just because you don't have a very good sense of style. <laughs>